Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and welcome back to my ongoing series focusing on plugins or extensions for the Godot game engine. Today, we are looking at one called Scatter, and I think you're going to be impressed by this one. And in fact, the person who makes this actually makes one of the first add-ons I looked at in the past, the concept graph. So what we are looking at here with Scatter is the sample scene in front of you. And this is what Scatter is all about. Basically, it is a way of procedurally generating content in scenes by scattering them around the scene. This is the showcase demo, and what you'll notice here is various different pieces of this scene are created using scattering. So you can see here these rocks, these are created using a scattering algorithm, but look at how they interact with the grass. That grass also created with the same thing. This fence over here, same thing. Everything here is controlled by spline points move it around, and it is distributed across the earth. This is a really, really cool plugin, especially if you are creating levels. Uh, you don't want to do a ton of stuff by hand. So let's say you're creating a... Uh an open world game and you want to have a road and then you want to create a fence to go beside that road. Well, that's exactly the kind of stuff Scatter can do. So you can do things like create these, um, I guess these rocks here are one of your closest examples, but you can also do it this entire area of grass, this entire set here is one big scatter distribution. So you can change the boundaries of it like so. And then what you're doing is occluding other scatters from within it. So you can use this to create, again, roads, fences, uh, shrubbery, and so on. Basically anything that kind of is, follows an area or encompasses an area or occludes an area can be used using Scatter. So now let's look at more of a hands-on example. So these are actually from the Scatter plugin itself. You want to grab this guy, basically just clone the archive. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, once you've cloned it, it's a typical uh, add-on. So you just load it into your uh, plugins once it's down here and make sure that it's enabled in the plugin settings. Uh, straightforward, this one you just drop in your add-ons. This is not a module, so it, it's really easy to work with. All right, so let's go and look at the other thing you get, the feature list right here. And this will showcase what Scatter is all about. So this first one here you can see, very simple Scatter. This is just using a spline de definition. So you can see here we've got multiple different spline points, and it fills it in uh, with the particular content that you've got. In this case, it is this uh, mesh right over here. Uh, you can change up various different values of it uh, when you've got it here. So here is the item being scattered. Uh, the instance, so you've got your mesh within, so you've got basically this mesh is being scattered over this encompassing area. And then you've got things like modifiers and so on. This one doesn't have any modifiers attached to it because it's pretty simple. It's basically just a scatter of this geometry over its space. So you can have whatever mesh you want. So it could be a fence or um, a tree or whatever. And then you could use it in this regard by defining a scatter item. Uh, you can set things like the scale modifier proportion of them, and then you sort of scatter them around. You can control using a, um, the, the curve is ultimately what is defining things. Next up, we have multiple scatters. What you've got going on here is basically the same thing, but you'll notice here we have two things being scattered. So instead of just the one mesh in there, you'll notice you have two scatter items. So if you've got, say you want to use scatter to define a forest, you could have four, five, six, seven different kind of tree types, and then just basically scatter them all within the same thing. Now this top level scatter, it's still just a spline controlling it. The only difference between this one and this one over here is that this particular scatter has multiple multi-mesh instances inside of it. Uh, so pretty straightforward on the whole. Our next example is exclusion. So here you can see a scatter item but you see within it, we have a point exclusion. This is a point that we've defined in space, and around that point, nothing will be scattered. And as you can see, it's very dynamic in how it's distributed. Uh, you can also set that point, so how big it is, how much influence it has on the area around it. Uh, but that one's pretty straightforward there. Here we've got uh, pretty much the same thing, uh, but here we're talking about uh, Circle Child. Uh, so here you'll see the points are multiple. Uh, next, we've got this guy over here. This is sort of the same thing, but what you're doing here is your exclusion area, the area that is not being scattered for, it's being defined using a path. So you here see another shape within. So what I could do is I can move that within and you'll see it's it's falling along this path or this curve. You can do it all the way up to the edges and so on. So same kind of concept, but your uh, scatter exclusion is being done via a path instead. And here we're doing exclude along a path, 
All right, so I'm not sure what the difference is. In, oh, exclude inside path, and this one is exclude on path. So this one is kind of an encompassing exclusion. So you, what you're doing is you're defining the boundary to be excluded, where this one, what you're doing is basically you're defining a path. So let's do a exclude along path, select the path right here, and you're gonna see as I move individual points within the path, that area gets excluded from the scatter profile. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, I could probably see using this one more often than that one, especially because I believe you can also set the, um, the the distance that the scatter width works. But if you've got more of an inconsistent fill on the inside, you're probably gonna wanna use uh, ins uh, exclude inside path instead. Uh, then we have follow path. So here what you've got is the mesh instances are following along the path that we've defined here. Again, this is useful for placing fence posts dynamically in your world. So all you have to do is basically set it up once with this multi-mesh instance of a fence. And then what you're doing is basically just simply defining a path and then it will follow the path. By the way, you'll notice there are tools up here for adding points, deleting points, and so on. Also for snapping to colliders. And that becomes relevant in the next example right here. And here you're gonna see we've got it um, basically projecting onto the floor. So what we have is an underlying surface under it. And this one is actually a little mesmerizing. So we got this uh, bulby mesh going on underneath. And watch what happens when the scattered surface, pretty straightforward, it's just a scatter project again, but it collides with the underlying uh, world object. So this, this physics-based object underneath us, we take into account the collisions with it. So that if you're doing uh, grass on a hill or you wanna do your fence, have your fence go up and around a non-regular shape, well, that's what this one enables you to do. So in an essence, that is scattered. You can obviously, if, if you're creating large worlds, you should probably immediately see the value to this. In fact, I think this one is, is probably useful enough that it should almost be included out of the box. This is a really cool tool uh, from a really to cool tool creator, to be honest. His last plugin was really, really awesome as well. So um, that is scatter. Again, pretty straightforward. Basically, just go ahead and clone the repository. Uh, and there's a couple of examples to get you up and running. Everything we saw here is simply an example he created. But creating your own scatters is quite simple. Basically, they're just a new node in there. And then you've also got the items, exclude paths, and so on. And you'll see those are basically things that you do under the hierarchy. So you add your scatter object into the scene, like this guy right here. Then you add a scatter item to it, like so as a child. And then you add the mesh of the item you want to scatter underneath it. And as we saw earlier on, you can have multiple uh, meshes. And you'll see here, there are a number of different modifiers available. So come here, you can say, uh, these are where you add in the modifiers that take effect. So if you want to have it so that it uh, randomizes projects on the floor, like we saw in that last example, extrude along a path, exclude, and so on. Those are all available simply via modifier stacks. So select a scatter instance over here, and then boom. Now, one thing you'll notice is scatters are actually kind of tricky to select at first, at least. So you're gonna notice it's not selecting anything. Well, that's because the entire volume isn't clickable. You have to actually select the underlying spline. The scatter object itself is ultimately a spline. So what you want to do to grab it is pick there. Picking anywhere else, you're not gonna get the scatter. It's actually the spline point that you need to, to pick to select the object. Um, so yeah, that is Scatter, a really cool plugin. Uh, it's from Hungry Proton. Uh, it's available under the MIT license. As I said, basically, you just clone this. You're gonna find inside. There are a couple of demos to get you up and running. Uh, but what you really wanna do is basically just clone Scatter into your add-ons folder, enable it uh, in the plugin section of your project, and you are good to go. As you will notice, it is very actively updated. It's under the MIT open source license. The MIT license itself is very liberal in what it allows you to do. So you, you can basically use this however you want. You just can't sue him for how it does. If it blows your computer up or anything else, hey, that's on you, not on Hungry Proton. So that is a really cool project. He's done a couple of other ones, like I said, that are definitely worth checking out. And this one is one of the coolest. It's a node-based procedural uh, content generator. I've already covered it actually. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about that one, Concept Graph, like I said, perhaps the single most impressive plugin I've seen yet for the Godot game engine. And I think Scatter probably shares some source code with it because they do a lot of the same things. Here you can see things like exclude along curves and so on. But this is basically, you draw these node graphs to create things procedurally inside the Godot game engine. So you can see nodes being used to create trees uh, and, and so on. Basically it, it brings Houdini-like functionality uh, to the Godot game engine. And Scatter, Scatter is similar. It, it's obviously got some common DNA 
But this one is for basically distributing mesh instances across a surface, if you want to look at it at the most simple level. But again, if you're doing map design, uh, map design, especially with large worlds, and you and you, um, you know don't want to place everything by hand meticulously, this one is going to be a godsend, especially with the snapping features. So you can have it, you know, um, snap down to objects you are working with, and then of course you can have it actually exist directly on top of objects. Makes your placement functionality a whole lot easier. So that is Scatter, another awesome plugin for the Godot game engine. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and also let me know if there's another plugin out there like this you'd like to see me cover. Give me suggestions down below, and I'll do my best. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.